Yes, 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 we've all seen this movie and we all know how it ends. But instead of the usual song and dance, why don't we all put down our glorious broadswords and peasant pitchforks for one second and stop acting like the poop we're slinging doesn't stink as much as the other guys. Objectively speaking, what is best, a PC or a console? Let's slog our way through the traditional arguments, shall we? First up is exclusives. Whether they're into God of War, Final Fantasy, Starcraft, Gears of War, Halo, or Super Smash Bros., fans will argue all day that the exclusives make a given platform best. <sighs> there is no such thing as a best exclusive, and every platform has exclusives. Ironically, given how often console zealots bring this point up, the Windows PC platform actually has more exclusive than every other console ever combined, along with stellar backwards compatibility thanks to DirectX. But, and here's a bombshell for the PC zealots, that doesn't make it best either. A fat lot of good redneck rampage is gonna do for someone who only really wants to play Pokemon. Next is the living room experience. Consoles are optimized for the couch. The interface is easy to read, the controllers are wireless, and this might seem like a small detail, but they can be turned on with a controller. Arguably, Steam Big Picture improves game navigation on the PC, and yes, you can buy little dongles to run the same controllers, wirelessly even, but no one actually does that. One infinitesimally small number of you actually have a separate PC on your TV for local gaming or game streaming. That it, Yes, yes, I know, a handful of you do, but most people who invest in two separate gaming boxes will at least consider buying two different kinds, a console for the TV and a PC for the desk. Horses for courses, my friends. But the PC is the horse for any course, isn't it, Linus? You can buy a cheapo Dell, slam a video card in it, and start playing great free games like League of Legends and Team Fortress 2, just like that. Or you can go balls to the wall and deck your setup out with cool peripherals like the Oculus Rift, 4K monitors, and even elaborate multi-screen configurations. Yes, the value and flexibility argument is a strong one for the PC, but one counter is the simplicity argument. Yes, internet connections have made console game releases more PC-like than ever, and not in a good way, but at least the game works as well as it can across the board. Because let's face it, not everyone wants to care about what brand motor oil is in their car, what heating element is in their dishwasher, or, yeah, it's true, what leet video card is in their gaming system. Which leads us to performance. I'm legit tired of hearing about how PCs are faster. I really am. They are and their core functionality is much deeper than what a console can be, but to be a whole lot faster, they're also more expensive. At a similar price, a PC really isn't that much better than a PlayStation 4. With that said, I'm even more tired of hearing about how consoles are faster. They're not. If you think they are, you're wrong. There was a time when you could argue that, but these days, you're just wrong. Sorry, bruh. Then there's the closely related value argument. Both sides can lay claim to massive catalogs of cheap games that were released last year, but two seemingly devastating blows to the console argument are the backwards compatibility of the PC courtesy of DirectX and the lack of a system-wide paid subscription for multiplayer. Unless, of course, you don't appreciate the rampant cheating in many PC games, even at the highest competitive level sometimes. Something that console gamers don't suffer from to the same degree. And then, of course, there's the hardware, too. You know, this is where it kind of degrades most of the time. Consoles are cheap and last a long time. Yeah, but PC gamers could keep their computers for seven years if they wanted potato-grade graphics, too. Your games are locked at 30 FPS, 792p. Oh, yeah, well, all your AAA games are crud ports of the games that run better on our supposedly inferior hardware. B maybe if your hardware didn't suck so bad, the whole industry could be able to move forward at a faster pace and... Yeah, we all knew this was heading there as soon as the potatoes got brought up. So let's reset again. The problem, and I'd actually like to address my fellow PC Master Race members for a moment here, is that at the end of the day, life is not a spreadsheet. And the way that we approached this video in the first place is actually sort of wrong. If we tackle this 
purely objectively, the PC is superior. It can achieve more check marks and fewer X's at a lower price, or a vast number more check marks at a greater price. Yeah, I know, but guys, it's not a about dispassionately comparing stats to crown a winner. It's about the games and the experience that you as an individual are after. If you want a super deep experience and EVE Online makes you happy, then great! But if someone else wants to play singing, dancing games with their friends, do you really expect them to crowd around a PC to do it? No, of course not! Is one of those scenarios more hardcore? Oh, I don't know, probably, but who cares? It's entertainment, and the TLDR here is everyone needs to just calm the heck down. Speaking of calming the heck down, lynda.com. I actually don't know if I'm allowed to do that segue for lynda.com, but the point is, you guys are going to want to go over to lynda.com slash techquickie if you want to learn online. You can get a free 10-day trial, and lynda.com's courses are easy to digest, taught by industry experts, and they're updated constantly, so you can keep on learning about whatever subject it is you want. They've got stuff that'll help you enhance your hobby experience, like photography, and they've got stuff that'll help you enhance your professional experience like photography. Uh, I mean, you can, you can use lynda.com for anything. That's the basic point. And they've got a lot of different stuff, not just photography, you know, coding, uh, videography, video editing, all kinds of amazing stuff. Just head over to lynda.com slash techquickie to try it out. We've got a couple people who work here at Linus Media Group who use their lynda.com skills every day. It's real and it works. So thanks for the sponsorship, lynda.com. You guys are awesome over there. And I'm sorry for that terrible segue. And as for you, the viewers, guys, thanks for watching. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fastest Possible episodes just like this one. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.